Being a real estate investor, it's really important to realize that scaling is the name of the game. So the more amount of doors and more amount of houses or apartments or pre-construction properties that you can buy, the more successful and wealthier you will be as an investor later on in your career. These are the things that I wish I knew when I first started was when I actually started buying real estate, I soon realized the more amount of doors and the more amount of houses that I can possibly own will mean the more wealthier I will be later on in life. So my whole vision and goal was to accumulate as many doors as possible. Now I have over 320 doors and counting going to a thousand. And this is the fastest way that you can scale your portfolio. As an investor, you have to understand the importance of scalability because how much you're able to scale and how fast you're able to scale will eventually determine how wealthy of an investor you will be later on in your life. And a part of scalability is understanding JV partnerships. Reason why JV partnerships are so crucial for your success as an investor, especially when you're looking to grow your portfolio, is because you have to understand that you're either gonna run out of money or you're gonna run out of mortgages that you can buy under your personal name or under your own assets. So you have to find more creative ways and more creative solutions to try to find more money. And more money that you have, the more access to more properties that you will have. So these are some of the pros and cons of JV partnerships when it comes to scaling your portfolio. So let's go over them now. Joint ventures and partnerships are commonly utilized in the real estate industry to pool resources, share risks, and leverage expertise. While they can offer numerous benefits, they also come with certain drawbacks. Here are three short points that I made for you guys, which are pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. Number one, enhanced financial capacity. Joint venture agreements are really beneficial for you as an investor or a real estate developer to combine and allocate your resources with other people that have the same goal as you do. So joint ventures, like I bought a building, this was a 17 unit building that I picked up and I had a JV partnership agreement with a partner on this who also had the same vision and goal as I did. So we bought that building together and we were partners on this building and we both made a lot of money together. But to buy a larger building like this, we had to combine our resources and combine and pool our funds together, which gave us access to larger, better properties that are on the market compared to buying smaller duplexes and triplexes. So JB partnership pro number one is enhanced financial capacity. You can buy more stuff because you have larger access to funds. Number two, diversified expertise. This is by far one of the biggest pros that I can say that really helped me scale larger to bigger portfolios just because we had two or three people looking at the property together. So collaborating with partners brings together different diverse skill sets and knowledge to the table. So whenever you're buying a property, you might be good at one thing. Let's just say you're good at finding contractors. You might not be good at managing your actual rent rolls. You might not be good at managing your accounting. So if you have two partners, you guys can bring both your strengths to the table and actually make sure the asset is better performing than it would be if you were just doing it by yourself, which is a big pro in my opinion. Pro number three, the sharing the risk and cost of an investment. So sharing some of the risks with a partner can really help and take that burden off of you as an individual when you have someone else in the battle with you in the thick and thin of it all. So whether you're being successful, you're being successful together. If you're not being successful because let's just say the interest of the property is really high and you're scared to take that risk, you might be more susceptible to say, you know what, I shouldn't be taking this risk just because I have someone else in the same mud as me fighting to make sure that this property will sustain itself. So especially in times like this when you have high interest rates, it can really be beneficial to have a partner which you can rely on and depend on just in case you have a rainy day. So if you don't have all your resources completely sorted, you have someone else that you can rely on just in case there was a bad day in the investment that you made. So sharing some of that risk also offers a sense of security and peace of mind. Now let's talk about the cons. What are some of the cons of joint venture agreements? So whenever you have another partner, the number one con that I would say is decision-making challenges. So there are some challenges when it comes to making decisions because you have multiple people involved in a transaction. You cannot make those decisions all on your own. So when you have partners, it's hard to decide on, you might like a certain type of flooring than your partner does. So you have to come to a conclusion that makes sure that you guys have a common interest towards that property. So conflicting interests or having difference in opinions can really make things harder or slow down the process, which I see as one of the big cons for JV partnerships. Con number two, so sharing profits and control. 
while joint ventures have access to additional capital and resources that you guys both bring to the table, they also require sharing the profits and making the decisions. And who is the making authority? So let's just say you have two partners and if you guys are not equally invested into the deal, it could make things a lot more difficult. So make sure when you're going into JV partnerships that you and your partner or partners that you're going into the deal with have a common understanding of who is putting in what amount of money, how much is someone bringing to the table, and whether they're putting in time equity or if they're putting in physical equity, which is money. So time or money. What are they bringing to the table and how do you guys divide the tasks? Because this can often solve a lot of problems later down the line, just in case something was to go wrong. So you have to make sure that you have a written contract in place with a lawyer that specifies each partner's duties and what they wanna to bring to the table when you're buying a certain investment. Because you might not have equal uh, control of a property. So if one person can have 30% ownership and the other person can have the 70% ownership. And the person that has 70% ownership is the one that's bringing the money. And the one that has 30% ownership is bringing the experience, the expertise, the time, the, and he's, he's taking care of the entire project. So there's certain, certain projects that, you know, I personally am on where I bring all the time, all the resources. I have all my connections, all my skilled trades and my expertise to the table to make sure that the investor who just has the money is making sure that they're getting a passive investment and they're more of passive investors but all of this has to be done through a lawyer so make sure that you guys have this sorted out that way so sharing profits and control that's con number two con number three potential trust and compatibility issues this is big so establishing and maintaining trust and compatibility amongst your partners is very crucial for the success of a joint venture or partnership to succeed. So you have to make sure that the people that you're getting in business with, you know what they're about, you know exactly where they're coming from, and then there's no trust issues. Because if you can't trust somebody, don't go into the business with them. Money is nice, but headache is not worth it. So you have to make sure that you have no headache. So difference in work ethics, communication styles, or business priorities. If they have other priorities that are not the building that you're buying, or it's something that you're not collaborating on together, and they're putting that time into something else, it might not be worth it for you. So you may have to make sure that you trust the partner, that you trust that they're going to be with you every step of the way. If they are on the table, they're doing exactly what they're supposed to from day one to day hundred. So make sure that you guys are really really careful with who you partner with because finding a wrong partner can be more troublesome and can give you way too much headache that it's not even worth investing in the first place. So you really have to do your due diligence and you really have to make sure that the partner that you're working with is also on the same path as you are. So now that you have the pros and cons of whether you should do a joint venture agreement or not with a partner, family member, or a friend, you can make a better decision in terms of why you should do this and who you should do it with. So make sure that you go out there and you find joint ventures because joint ventures are very lucrative. I've done them myself and they can really help you scale. Like I said, from zero properties to hundred properties. Now I have over 320 doors and we were only able to make this happen because we combined our resources, knowledge, expertise, and we made friends along the way. So, you know, you all learn through the process, you grow together. And as long as you have the growth mindset, it is very doable and you can really scale. So it puts you in different conversations and in different rooms with people that you never really thought you would have had a chance to meet before. So it's all possible through joint ventures. So make sure you guys go out there, find somebody that has a similar mindset with you and buy a property. So if I'm in Toronto or if I'm in Vancouver or if I'm in Miami or if I'm in LA, I'm trying to find people that want to invest into the market or the niche that I personally like. And if they also like that niche, you can actually find someone that has the same interest. So go on Facebook groups, find the communities that you're trying to be in, be a part of that community and try to go to social networking events in that city that you're trying to buy a property in and collaborate with other people. So you can easily find two or three people that have a similar type of drive that you might have to buy and attain something larger in size, whether if you're trying to grow your portfolio or if you're just getting started and you, you might not have all the money right now, but if you have the funds, you can find someone that has expertise that can show you how to scale. Or if you don't have the funds and you have the expertise, 
bring that to the table. So combine your resources, make sure you guys have a great lawyer because that really helps with JV partnerships. Have everything laid out on the table. And once everything's on the table, there's nothing left in the air and there's no guessing game involved. So make sure that the partner that you're working with, you're very honest, truthful, ethical, and you're upfront with your expectations and what you'd want out of them in this partnership. It's like marriage. It's a marriage between two parties. So you have to marry uh, each other and you have to make sure that you guys stick through it all because divorces are ugly and they can get really expensive. Happy investing, stay invested. Hope each and every single person that watched this video learned something about joint ventures and how to scale using JV partnerships. And this is how you can be a successful investor. If you enjoyed watching this video, I thank you for taking the time to actually learn something today about real estate investing. I, Armani Anand, will be posting a lot more videos like this one that you just watched on my channel. So please continue to support, subscribe, and like for more videos like this. We're going to cover everything from real estate investing, scalability, how to be a big investor, cars, and a little bit of lifestyle. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more. See you all soon.